Welcome to Legends. So in today's video, the aim and the theme was in the renewable aspect of um, energy, so renewable energy and solar energy. And I picked a project which was a solar tracking system, which in this case would be one of the most optimal ways to increase the efficiency of solar energy collection using solar panels. So with that said, this is basically how it's supposed to work. So we all know that the sun moves overhead from east to west and because of that if you mount a solar panel in just one direction it's not going to actually be able to capture the most amount of sunlight throughout the entire day so with the solar panel mounted and often using a two axis or even a one axis system of movement you are able to increase the efficiency of collection of solar energy as the solar panel moves by changing its own angle of inclination to fit the position of the sun and collect the most amount of sunlight from the sun so with that being said and done, this was the project about that and how the build came to be. It was a time limited build, so I wasn't able to fix up the body, make it look really really good. But it actually works and is efficient and something you can build upon and you can actually just work on. So let's get into it. For those of you who are subscribed, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who subscribed and to those who aren't, why not subscribe? If you like our type of content, make sure to just sub, drop a comment on future builds that you want us to see and leave a like. It really does mean a lot. So yeah, back to it. In the design phase of the project, I first of all initially thought of using LDRs at different positions around the solar panel in order to determine the best angle the solar panel should move towards. But I scrapped the idea and went with one where the LDRs are actually mounted on the solar panels, which would allow less LDRs being used and allows an easy comparison between the edges of the solar panel in order for it to move to the position that has the most sunlight. The components used include LDRs, an SG97 motor, straw board for the base, an Arduino microcontroller which is the brain of the system, you have a power battery power system, you have 18650 3.7 volt lithium polyester batteries, you also have a battery casing, a lot of jumper wire, you have a soldering iron, a soldering lead for your soldering, you have tape, you have glue, in this case I used hot glue in order to make things fast and quick. And you need probably a ruler in order to measure and cut out properly. You have a multimeter to actually measure the voltage coming out from the solar panel. Rather than that, those are like the main components and main materials that were used in the build. So in the initial stages, as I said before, the design had been changed from being a portrait form to a landscape form. And doing this actually made it much easier for the servo motor to actually control. So this was how we started. This started out by cutting up the straw board into um, rectangular pieces because it was going to be in a landscape form now. Added another another layer of straw board in order to make the base a bit firmer. I also got to cutting the pillars which are going to mount the SG90 servo on and then created the axis on it by using one of the connectors for the SG90 for those gear connectors and then put it on the other side creating a form of um, bearing which the um, barbecue stick was going to fit through. Mind you, this is all like house made, so you can actually just replicate it yourself. You could trim off the barbecue stick, but I left mine there now to be able to adjust distance just a bit. Um, one of the issues that you might encounter if you are building this is the precision of your uh, SG90 motor and the axle that you are going to be using to mount it properly and to keep it in a properly aligned form. So you might have to not glue once you are done or you measure accurately and glue but try your best to fit the axles in a parallel line or in rather a straight line rather instead of parallel line sorry. So yes, after the base was done and the SG90 was confirmed to be sitting on it, I soldered off um, the outputs of the solar panel using some jumper cable and soldering wire and lead, took the power output from the solar panel out and then attempted to mount the solar panel onto the SG90 already. One thing about the SG90 is that it only moves between 0 to 180 degrees so you have to put it in a way 
where your 180 degrees actually moves the solar panel basically you would want your solar panel to be able to move from the left from being aligned straight on the left to all the way to being aligned straight on the right basically that's what it means so that whole process will take quite a while if you are not used to using seven motors if you are it just takes a bit of fine tuning so you can get that your 90 degrees straight and you can get your 180 degrees after that was done the seven motors gear attachment was basically glued onto the solar panel that was set aside and then mounting it was done in order to make it at least very stable and accurate then i tested it using the arduino code the simple sweep code that allows the sg90 to move forward and backwards so i could see the range of motion for the solar panel and then check it out now once that was done it was now to go into the control system which is what we're going to allow our system to detect whether there was more sunlight on one end than the other that was done using an LDR, which is a light dependent resistor. I'll explain more about that. So when light comes in contact with the LDR, the resistance value decreases, making it photoconductive, which can allow you to check where the most sunlight is coming from by comparing the values which are be read from both the LDR placed above and below or on each on each side of the solar panel. So with that, you have the system for actually determining which side of the solar panel has more light and then you can now make the motor in the control loop move towards the side that has more sunlight until both values are, are equal so once that was done the next thing to do was to develop the power system which included two batteries which are two 18650 lithium polyester batteries with a battery power supply module that gives us five volts directly from the module instead of having to create a circuit to get us a, a voltage regulator circuit to give us five volt output with that done, basically I hooked up the adjuster straight to the 7.4 volts from the two lithium polyester batteries, then got the 5 volt output to the 7 motor so that it because it operates on 5 volts. Then hooked up the output of the solar panel to a voltmeter or rather a multimeter set on a voltmeter now to be able to read the voltages and see if it's optimal. One thing you would notice in the testing videos is that ambient light, which is light around you, actually would interfere with your reading so it's best to test in a dark environment but before that let's explain the code a bit more so in the code you have the servo library you have the definition of the two different ldrs and you have an error point value which allows you to check the, if there's an error in the reading process you have the initial point of the servo motor which is a 90 degrees so when you restart your code or you activate the program the first thing it does is it sets the motor to 90 degrees keeping this keeping the solar panel flat before it starts to adjust that's the aim of that um, line of code right there so once you're done you activate the servo you create the delays and then what you do is you check the value of each ldr by using the analog read statement and then check for the error by using the absolute values of the difference between the first LDR and the second LDR and then the conditional statement for it to move is if one of the LDR is greater than the other or let's use LDR1 and LDR2 if LDR1 is greater than LDR2 then the position should increase that the value of the position should increase or if or else if the LDR1 value is less than the LDR2 value then the position should decrease or rather the position value should decrease and then it now prints or writes that value to the servo motor and that's basically the logic of control a very simple and straightforward code that you could implement in your um, project so with that let's get to the testing As you can see in the testing videos, you will be seeing the motor jitter because it basically moves in increments of 1. So it just moves in increments of 1 based on the values and then there's an actual delay of 18 milliseconds between each movement. So it's not really quick because the sun doesn't really move that fast so it's pretty much efficient in that regard. Um, other than that, as I said before, ambient lights from your surroundings, so if you had multiple lights on, might affect it and you need a stronger light source much closer to the solar panel and the LDRs in order to make that effect um, visible so you can see it actually moving with the changes in the intensity of light on either of the LDRs and your solar tracking system is done. Please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment on future videos that you actually want to see and projects that we should build and then you can also check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter. TikTok over my will be posting regular updates so you don't actually have to wait for the full videos to come out. You will actually see more updated videos and clips as the video projects are being built. 